the, ladies and gentlemen, let me call the August meeting of the Lowndes Hot Oscar uh, uh, County Zoning uh, Board of Appeals to order. Sorry, there's a bear on the screen here. Um, everyone in attendance will please make sure they sign in on the attendance sheet at the back of the meeting room. Before we begin, I'll explain the process. I will call each case on a case-by-case -case name and case number. The city and county representing staff will come to the lectern to present the facts of the case. After presentation, the board may or may not ask staff questions. Once the board has heard the case and asked all questions of staff, we will move to hearing from either the applicant or their representation. After hearing from the applicant, we will hear from anyone else who wishes to express support for the case. Finally, we will hear from anyone who wishes to express opposition to the case. Anyone addressing the board will please come to the lectern and give their name and address for the record. For clarity and respect, we ask that only the person at the lectern address the board and that the audience give them an uninterrupted chance to be heard. If there is, an important, if there is important information that you feel we need to consider, then please come to the lectern when it is your turn and you are called in the interest of time. The board may ask you to keep your comments brief and to the point. Please do not come to the lectern over only to restate the same information we have already been given by someone else. Once the board has had the chance to hear from all sides on the matter and ask any questions we feel necessary, then we will render a decision. If we do not feel that the necessary information is available to render a decision today, then we may decide to table the case for the next meeting. Please be aware that this board is here today only to address various applications to the zoning codes for Lowndes County and the City of Valosta. This is the only matter on which the board has been, give, been given the power to render decision. We cannot and do not have the power to address any other matters that are not covered by the zoning codes of Lowndes County or the City of Valosta. Thank you. Now, we will call the first case. Lowndes County case VAR 2019-09, Type Farms, 6734 Georgia Highway, 376 Lake Park. Ms. Deborah? Yes. Yes. Um, we've got one member that will be recusing for the case. Capital letter G, the number three, 
as it pertains to the maximum height of a fence in the front yard. In this scenario, um, in talking with Ryan, we, in regards to the landscaping and the buffer, there is existing trees and vegetation on this site, which they will be utilizing a lot um, of what's already there to meet or complement uh, the intent of the ULDC. Uh, if you would look on page eight and nine of your packet, you will find um, the language that pretty much detail how, um, what they're proposing to add in as far as the landscaping and the flood. Number three, uh, we were talking about the chain link fence being allowed to go in the front yard. The ULDC only allows for the chain link fence on the side and rear yard. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ryan would like to um, do the front as well. Uh, in regards to the same section, G and 3, uh, the front yard has a maximum height of 6 and Mr. Ryan and his team, they're asking for a minimum of 70. Oh, yes, go ahead. Sorry. Is all of this because this is zone R1 instead of EEA? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Question, Joe. Yes. You said on the fence height, seven foot minimum, not seven foot Max. maximum. Do they, were y'all discussing more than seven no, feet? No, 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 You're correct. I should have said seven feet maximum in the front. If, if this was EA, it's seven feet maximum. Any other questions? Staff? Thank you. Yes. Uh, is the applicant or applicant's representation here who would like to speak on this? Yes. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I'm Ryan Pierce, the sole mayor of the environmental engineer. I uh, put together this application. The main thing, uh, just to touch on a few points real quickly. The seven foot uh, minimum required fence, the reason we're doing that or requesting that is that it's per the National Electrical Code. Um, they require that you have any type of electrical equipment that will have uh, be encased. And one of the requirements is typically a six foot tall chain link fence with a um, one foot on top with the hot wire. If you can't do that, which that's not allowed at all on R1, then the next requirement would be a seven foot tall fence chain link all the way up to the top. Um, so that's the reason for the seven foot tall fence. And like I said, we got it on three sides, and we just need it on that fourth side. Um, and then as far as landscaping, again, we're trying to be good neighbors and, and uh, put up any uh, shrubs or trees where required and following the, the county zoning uh, or landscape plan uh, in accordance with that, but just being um, using the existing trees there and and utilize those and not have all these extra requirements that um, don't necessarily apply to our use. That's pretty much it. Any, and also, glad to answer any questions about this or solar energy. I have just one question. I noticed in your application you said that you would use wax, merle, and holly. 
Um, I'm happy that you're using native plants, so please do that. Okay. With the number of panels that you're putting up, how, how close do you anticipate being to the fence and the same thing with property line? Um, so our, our, from where our panels are? Yeah, well, I, was, I was trying to get a handhold on if you start putting bunches of trees in there, then it could affect some of the panels on the edges potentially that's if you're coming real close. Exactly, that's very good. You're back all about in there. Yeah, that's very good point. So, what we'll do is that 30 foot bucket yard, we'll plant our plant or our trees and shrubs as close as we can to the front of that 30 foot buffer, you know, away from our plant as far as we can. Um, but that, you know, ultimately we'll keep them maintained so they're not above. We typically allow for about a 20 foot tree be on the perimeter of our fence wouldn't necessarily affect our uh, our development, but we'll keep them further than that and we'll keep them maintained so they don't grow higher than that because our panels aren't higher than six to seven feet tall maximum. So. Okay. That was actually my next question. I was curious to you know what was the height on your solar panel. So some may be seven, some may be six, or maybe like in that in that range. Yeah, so these are actually uh, trackers what we call trackers, and they follow the sun throughout the day. So their max height is about, depending on how we put them in the ground, but their max height is typically about eight to nine feet, absolute max. They're like facing, yeah, exactly. They're facing the due east and due west early in the morning. They rest at six feet tall during the middle of the day and at night. So a seven foot tall fence, you really won't be able to see you know, the panels during most of the day or at night. Understood, so your max tilt is about nine, you're saying? Yeah. Thank you. Um, how long is the term of your lease? Uh, I believe this one is 35 years. Okay. Are you required to remove all of your equipment at the end of the lease? We are. That's part of the decommissioning plan. Okay. So we would be concerned about tying this to, to the use of the property. go with the property forever we want to go with this use of the property so should they stop being having this use of the property then there's no uh, variance for any a seven foot fence in the front yard. it ceases if that's the language that you all want it will cease okay any other questions for representation Thank you. Um, is there anybody else here who would like to speak in support of this case? Anybody here that would like to speak in opposition? Ms. Deborah, was your office co co called or contacted about this case at all? No, not at all. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion?
those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, all right. Um, we would like to officially welcome again a new member. Uh, Mr. Hogan. Thank you. Thank you. Back with us again. Welcome back, man. Hey, thank you all. I appreciate it. Glad to be back. Um, the other thing, uh, does, any, well, does anybody else have any other additional business that they'd like to bring up? Although I can mention that Mr. Brantley's term is up for, he's up for consideration for reappointment. That decision should be made at this week's council meeting. Um, do we need to do a support letter or anything like that? No. Okay. All right. Um, the only other thing I had, uh, and I've mentioned this to Ms. Deborah and Ms. Tracy, would, would, is that I would like to see us to keep start keeping track of members' attendance on this board, if at all possible, if everybody else is in agreement. No. We approve, right now we approve an absence if it's a necessary absence, but we do not track. Nobody, has, there's no track record or, or there's no record of, you know, who's, who's in attendance at each meeting um, other, other than the meeting minutes. Yeah. But you have to go, what I'm saying is, so over the course of the year, you know, or however long people are all there, there's, there's no way, there's no easy way of looking back and seeing whether somebody's been in or out of half of the meetings for the year or something like that. You, like Mr. Strickland said, you have to go back through the meeting minutes and count that up. And so if everybody is in agreement, I would like to see us start tracking that, whether Ms. Jeffer or Tracy, one of you would take that all. And then maybe also <clears throat> something that comes to my mind is, should we put up like a certain uh, amount of numbers, you know, a certain amount of Absolutely. We already have it. That's, that's in. Uh, we have it in this policy. This, I can't speak for the county. I don't know what your call, the county's policy will be if, if they have it. But the city does have an attendance policy, which I can email to the board. So we, we, we have that in our own bylaws policy of attendance. We do. It came up shortly after. Well, it was few years back yeah. that we, we enacted that yeah. and added that to the to the where are those on the where are those bylaws? I have seen old copies of the bylaws. Um I probably can pick around my back mail and find one. Yeah. I don't know yeah. that I, I don't know that I actually have a word document with the bylaws. I've got like a PDF but I don't know that I actually have an official word document that I can look for those up. We'll probably, um, if you guys like, um, because like I said, I don't know what the uh, bylaws actually say, but we probably should take them kind of like, we should go over and review it. Maybe we may need to strengthen whatever it says, you know, and also if it's only for the city, maybe we should find one for the county as well. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Okay. Is that something we'd like to put on next month's agenda? Um, that's fine. Okay. I, I think that, you know, if we, once we find it, we can email it out. Everybody can take a chance to read it, and then if they see anything that they want to bring up at, at additional business, you know, as far as adding to it or discussing it, I think we can. Um, but I don't, you know, it might take a little bit to dig up the, the, the bylaws first, so so we can handle that one. Um, okay, it sounds like everybody's. I didn't see hear any disagreement with that policy, so we'll have to cut. So we'll add that. Anything else anybody would like to discuss? All right. We are in German. Thank you.